The intrigue surrounding the Kremlin, the mutiny by Wagner mercenaries and the former chef who leads them continues. The Belarusian Defense Ministry have released footage which they say shows Wagner forces in the country and training Belarusian soldiers. Where they are not is in Ukraine. The Pentagon says the mercenary group is no longer engaged there in any significant way. As to the whereabouts of their chief, former chef Yevgeny Prigozhin, a photo of him in his underpants has been circulated after President Putin claimed that the group does not exist anymore. Well, to explore this, I, earlier I spoke to Candice Rondeau, a senior director at the New America Think Tank. She spent years investigating the Wagner Group. I began by asking her why Yevgeny Prigozhin may have refused President Putin's offer to keep the troops but under command of the Russian army. Well, I mean, losing control of the Wagner Group means losing his political relevance, uh, losing a hold of what has now become kind of a social movement inside Russia. I think we saw that with the so-called March of, of Justice on Moscow. Um, he was able to rally thousands. Uh, he was received with great fanfare when he arrived uh, in Voronezh, just uh, a couple hundred kilometers short, shy of, of Moscow. Um, and so he understood that um, the Wagner Group was a, a big piece of his uh, political survival and perhaps even his uh, physical survival. What about Mr. Prigozhin himself? Again, you know, a lot of mystery about whether he's in Belarus or whether he's in Russia. And then this photo emerged, uh, apparently two days ago, of him in his underpants, in a tent, kind of waving to the camera, more or less saying, I'm still here, guys. Is he still there? Is he even still alive? I don't think there's any question that he's still alive. I think we would know if he was dead. Uh, in the same way that you would expect to hear uh, if you know the leader of ISIS or the leader of Al-Qaeda was killed, yeah. uh, as we did hear, of course, with Osama bin Laden. He's alive, let's assume that then, but who is he loyal to and what's he doing? Well, Brigodin has always been loyal to himself first. Um, I do think that there is some substance to um, the reporting that the threats to his family by the Kremlin uh, were one motivator for halting the mutiny back a couple of weeks ago, and that he is also very loyal to his family. Um, he has, of course, several children, including one, Pavel, who has fought, apparently, uh, in Wagner forces on the front lines. Um, you know, his wife, of course, is still uh, in St. Petersburg, we presume. And, and so... Um, that those loyalties are, are very important, mm. family, friends, um, close comrades, longtime business contacts. Now, the other thing is that there's a sort of game of, you know, either musical chairs or it's a full-scale purge, I'm not sure which one, in the army itself. So apparently 28 generals have been questioned, 15 have been sacked, including a chap called Ivan Popov who had the call sign um, Spartacus and who called his own soldiers in the 58th Army, the gladiators. He was apparently very good, and now he's been disappeared because he criticized the army leadership. Again, it seems as if there's a lot of trouble in the upper echelons of the Russian army right now. Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, there are mixed, um, you know, narratives here. We have um, certainly a very personalized politics of Prigozhin at work when it comes to the, the mutiny and then the response and the deal that was struck. Um, at the same time, uh, there is, I think, something to be said for the fact that um, he was expressing, you know, and voicing uh, the dissatisfaction not only of his echelon, uh, but those in the regular conventional forces like Popov. And, um, you know, this mutiny has done something for Putin. It has given him the leverage that he needs to conduct the purge that he needed to do mm. uh, in any case to kind of uh, rinse, wash, repeat and see if he could reset um, for this counter counter offensive this fall. But if you're losing good generals like Popov, if you sack them, does that not make you weaker? 100% it makes you weaker. And I think, you know, this is yet another potential miscalculation in a long line of miscalculations that Putin has made. Uh, the idea that he can suddenly reach down into the ranks, uh, maybe pull up a few colonels and replace these high ranking generals um, is a bit. Uh, off the chain or I think unhinged, if you really think about it, to decapitate uh, the entire rank. But um, Putin seems determined, and that might reflect uh, even more fear on his part, that um, he won't be able to control uh, this escalating conflict inside the military. Candice Rondo, thank you very much indeed.